me that this house do now adjourn. Yeah. The question is that this house do now adjourn. Sir John Whittingdale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and it's a pleasure to have a fellow Essex member in the chair. Uh, and I'd like to welcome my honourable friend, the Minister, the member from uh, Faversham and B. Kent. And I'm also glad to see my constituency neighbours, uh, the honourable uh, member for Rochford, across the other side of the crouch from me, and indeed my honourable friend, uh, the member for Whitham. She and I share the Malden district between us, and we are working very closely on an issue which is of huge importance to both my and her constituents. St Peter's Hospital in Malden is a much-loved community hospital. It has been delivering care since the NHS was founded, but the building itself is a former workhouse and is now over 150 years old. We have known for some time that the building has significant problems, but the quality of care provided there has, thanks to the dedication of the staff, been superb. But there are significant challenges which have become worse over time. The hallways are too narrow for stretchers, the floors haven't been able to take the weight of the beds, the lift has repeatedly broken down, and there are leaking roofs, asbestos, and potentially even a risk of legionnaires. And while money has been spent over years to maintain the building and keep it going, it has long been recognised that a new purpose-built facility is needed. Either there should be a new hospital on the present site or at a new location, and that has been a matter under debate and discussion for quite a number of years. So, in 2003, the annual report of the Malden and South Chelmsford Primary Care Trust, it stated that two preferred sites had been identified, that a provisional outline business case approval had been given, and that the new build was scheduled to open sometime towards the end of 2007. It never happened. Uh, there were difficulties in that particular instance of establishing the ownership of part of the land off Linebrook Way where it was due to be sited. Since then, we have had a succession of studies, debates about what a new hospital should offer, whether it should be a health hub or not, not and even most recently, uh, there were plans being dra drawn up for a new site of the development to the west of Malden on Wick Hill. However, this again became stuck due to the lack of sufficient funding for the access road and a reduction in the contribution available from the developer and the sec Section 106 money from the housing uh, being developed nearby. So in August last year, it was announced that to meet the anticipated winter pressures, the inpatient beds would be relocated to Brentwood and Rochford, and the birthing unit transferred to St Michael's Hospital Braintree. We were told that these changes were only temporary, while long-term solutions were found. Despite this, in January, the Mid and South Essex ICB announced that it was proposed to make these changes permanent, and that the outpatient services at St Peter's would also be re relocated elsewhere, allowing the building to be eventually closed. These proposals are subject to consultation, which has recently been extended to the 4th of April. Already, the ICB say 2,600 of their surveys have been returned. At a public meeting that I organised with the Mayor of Malden, Councillor Andrew Lay, over 400 people attended and another 100 had to be turned away. I've also received nearly 700 email responses to my own survey, and I'm currently distributing 25,000 leaflets across the constituency uh, containing a survey. It is already clear that my constituents are unanimous in wanting to see medical services continue in the town. They also believe that the consultation is a cosmetic exercise with decisions already taken. And I have to say, that this is reinforced by the fact that the two alternative options presented for the inpatient beds currently in St Peter's Hospital both involve closing the wards in St Peter's and moving them elsewhere. Madam Deputy Speaker, 
The Malden district is growing steadily. We have something like 3,000 houses currently under construction in Malden and Haybridge, with another 1,500 across the district. Demand for NHS services is rising steadily, with the GP to patient ratio already one of the worst in the country. Rather than closing NHS facilities, we need more. In addition to this, the Malden district is geographically spread with some villages already half an hour's travel time just to get to Malden. Mm. The travelling time to Broomfield, to Braintree or to Brentwood can be up to an hour or more from villages like Tillingham or Southminster in the Denji Peninsula. And the idea that an expectant mother in the early stages of birth should have to travel an hour is appalling. The ICB suggested last year that there was an average of just six births per month at the maternity unit in St Peter's. But for a large part of that time, the unit was actually closed because staff were sent to Chelmsford. Ten years ago, there were over 300 births per year, and since that time, the population has grown steadily. As one of the midwives wrote in the survey which I am conducting, our unit has seen thousands of births over its 75 years. Over the past five years, we've had over a 1,000 postnatal stays. Mothers who have birthed at Broomfield then needed ongoing support coming to stay with us. We've taken readmissions from the community with babies not feeding well, which in turn warded off a remission to Broomfield, where beds are always in short supply. We do in excess of 50 community visits weekly, 80-plus clinic appointments weekly, over 20 new big bookings a week, and anything between five to ten appointments a day on our ward for anything extra. We are so much more than the six births a month that was widely reported and made us, as a team, so very angry and undervalued. Madam Deputy Speaker, the availability of inpatient services and the maternity unit are of huge importance to my constituents. But it is the outpatient services on which literally thousands depend. Each year, there are some 80,000 outpatient appointments with a huge range of specialties such as x-rays, blood tests, ophthalmology. And while, unlike my writing friend, the member for Whitham, I have not actually used the birthing unit, I have received physiotherapy myself at the hospital and I'm due to have an AAA screening there in the next few weeks. Now, I do welcome the assurance from the ICB that outpatient services will be maintained at St Peter's until alternative locations in the town are found. But it is absolutely essential that these are maintained in Malden without any break or cessation of service. And it is not good enough simply to divide up the different services and try and find buildings across the town to slot them into. What we need is the new hospital health hub that has been promised for so long. We've seen the new hospital at Braintree. We've seen the expansion of Broomfield and South End, but Malden has been consistently overlooked. Now, last week in the budget, it was announced that the Malden district is being allocated levelling up money of £5 million for cultural projects. Of course I welcome this, but what my constituents want is not cultural projects, but a new hospital. Mm. Essex County Council and the District Council have money set aside, but it is unlikely that that is going to be sufficient. I applaud the Government's continuing investment in the NHS, of which we saw further proof last week. But I would ask the Minister to tell the Mid, -Essex, Mid and South Essex ICB to think again, and rather than cutting services, to maintain and expand them in order that my constituents have the high quality and easily accessible health care which they deserve. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I beg 